Justin, I know there's always that uh, kind of excitement level before a fight, but uh, a fight like this with a guy that you've been in there with that you know is going to put you through those car crashes that you're used to, what's, what's the feeling like ahead of that? Yeah, I feel good, man. It's, it's always nice to be, uh, you know, back in the main event under the spotlight. Um, you know, I missed it, so I'm excited to be back here and excited to perform again. It's what I love to do. Is there any different mindset? Because, like, I'm sure there's certain matchups that you go, I bet I could go dominate that guy. There, I mean, this doesn't look like a fight where either guy's going to be able to dominate, right? Like, it's going to be a war, and that's what everybody's yeah. excited about. Is that um, a different feel? I mean, every fight you prepare for is – the reason why we're such big fans of this sport is because it's so – anything, anytime, you know? Any shot, one shot, it's all it takes. And, yeah, this guy is dangerous, you know? And, you know, usually, um, you know, I'm, I've accepted that this is a 50-50 fight in my mind. And – with the, um, you know, with the chance at retribution, it's been driving me every day to work harder. The BMF title, uh, you know, kind of become a, a, a love thing. It's fun. Does it, does it feel like, because you've been in championship matchups, I mean, does it have the same feel as a true championship matchup, or is it just kind of a, a fun aspect? I mean, I think this fight gives you that feel without, without anything on the line. Um, but, yeah, I mean, for the legacy, it's huge. You know, we um, – First is championship belts, and second is legacy. That's why we fight. Uh, third might be money, but those first two things are very important. And, you know, we're all trying to create a legacy that's going to live on well past our time, and that's, that's been my goal from day one. I think a lot of people look at it as a 50-50 fight the same way you do. A lot's being made about the elevation, the fact that you train in elevation, live in elevation. Do you feel that that matters when you get in there? I think it's going to help with the confidence a little bit, but at the end of the day, you know, tired is tired and it's going to suck. And we, we've both been, you know, preparing mentally to, to push through that. And that's, that's part of the game. Nice. Last thing for me, I mean, everybody's looking forward to this fight. You know, every time you get in there, it could be a fight of the year. Are you looking at this also as a number one contender fight? We know we've got a championship matchup in a few months. I mean, are you thinking about that? Yeah, absolutely. I think this is number two versus number three. I mean, number one's fighting the champion in October, and then, you know, we're going to fight the winner of that, the winner of this fight. Justin, earlier this week, Dustin said, if this fight goes 25 minutes, you'll both be talking about it in the hospital because that's where you'll be. Do you sort of agree with that assessment? Yeah, probably. I mean, we both, uh, we both create a lot of damage. Um, and 25 minutes is a long time to, to create that damage. So, I, I mean, that's a pretty fair assessment, I would say. For people who don't understand the elevation, uh, on UFC Embedded, it looked like Dustin only just got here. He didn't come here early to acclimatize. What sort of difference does it make training at elevation for your fight performance? I think, uh, you know, confidence. Confidence is huge. And, you know, it's just going to give me that confidence. I've been pushing myself, uh, you know, extremely hard at altitude, higher altitude than this. And, but tired is tired, and we're going to get really tired. A lot of people talk, you included, talk about your transition from crazy brawler to more technical striker. Does any part of you wonder, like, if me and Dustin go in there and it goes crazy, that I, I'll have to just revert back to that crazy brawler and it, I still have that in me? Or do you think, no, I have to be more technical to find success? Yeah, I think I have to be more technical, no, no matter what. Um, obviously, I'm willing to, you know, fight fire with fire. That's, that's what we do in this game. But, you know, I'm, um, yeah, I'm going to try to be as methodical as possible and make no mistakes. At this level, it's mistakes. Take advantage of their mistakes and make no mistakes. In terms of the BMF title, you know, you two are fighting for the belt, but is there anyone else in the division that you think, hey, that guy, he's BMF, and I could see myself maybe defending this title against him one day? Oh, shit, I'm not really thinking about anybody else right now. Family? But just kind of going off of that, do you envision that you, if you do win that you would defend this belt? Because I know Jorge never really defended. He said that was one of one. Yeah, I think uh, the aspirations are the championship, championship belt. Um, I think this catapults us right to that, me to that. And so, you know, I won't be looking to defend that. If I have a choice, it's going to be going for the, for the championship belt. And correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is your first rematch since the Luis Palomino fight, the second one. Um, in terms of preparation at camp, does anything change when you're preparing for a rematch as opposed to a fresh phase? No, I wouldn't say so. I think, you know, especially with the five years in between, um, we're both completely different people, different fighters. And, you know, with age comes wisdom. I've obviously grown. He's grown. And, you know, there's a, you know, I, I remember he has a really nice left hand. It's a beautiful left hand, you know, so we've been working on that. And given how after the after your first fight, like he had to do his media scrum sitting down because you beat him up, you had obviously a lot of damage too. When you went to your family and you were like, "I'm fighting Dustin Poirier again," were you, were they just like, 
remember we, they remembered what happened last time after the fight did they yeah ever, but my family anything? is extremely competitive um if we go bowling we have to take different vehicles because somebody will leave somebody <laughs> um so they're they're as excited as i am for uh, for a chance to get that get that fight back then last one for me um it might be a little weird question but if a, if a little kid comes up to you and asks what the bmf title stands for do you say it's a bad motherfucker bell or do you have to kind of change it? I, I haven't you know luckily i haven't read into that uh situation so i'm not sure what i would say i think um you know i think i would probably describe it as a as a championship belt to a kid justin you're here um it seems like the plan is to have jorge masvidal wrap the belt around the winner here but he's a teammate of dustin he says he thinks dustin is gonna win do you even want him to do that if you win this fight yeah, I want to make him do it. Yeah, that would be nice. Make the moment sweeter for you. Yep. Uh, who do you I, think know, I know who hate it, so I'll love it that much more. <laughs> who do you think wins uh, between Islam and Charles when they fight later this year? I mean, you'd be a fool to say Charles. You know, we saw the last fight. And so, you know, if you're, if you're going to bet money, granted, you're gonna, not going to get good odds on that money. But, yeah, I would say, I would say Islam. I would prefer Charles because I want to get that fight back as well. Thank you. Hey, Justin. Um, I don't know if you saw this stat, but like, it's kind of like a, it's a kind of a wild one. Like, since your last fight, yeah, the exact same. Yeah, like, <laughs> isn't that just a weird? Like, when you yeah. saw that, like, did you trip out? I mean, uh, we both fight the best, you know, and we we both continue to do that. Both continue to prove ourselves, and so I, I mean, um. You know, with that loss, the trajectory was different, but ultimately the destination's always the same. We've both been fighting for a championship belt this entire time. Awesome. Thanks, man. Justin Red over here. Last year you talked about meeting 920 Salt Lake City fans over the course of three and a half hours outside of the Delta Center now as the Vivint Arena back then. And so was there any sort of a reaction to the fact that you get to fight in front of a bunch of people who you got to meet last year? And, and was there any reaction for you to come back here or anything like that? I mean, uh, I, these people love fighting. The show last year was fantastic. You know, they, they showed out. But uh, I'm going to give them a better show than they got last time. You know, me and Dustin, I got the perfect training partner, perfect dance partner, I mean. Um, but, I, you know, I love, I love fighting for people. That's, that's what I, you know, I'm a performer. I love to show off. And these people are going to appreciate it. So I, I love that. Actually, um, one follow-up. Obviously, your former opponent Tony Ferguson's fight on this fight, uh, fight on this f fight card. Um, what do you think of his career? Like, obviously, since he fought you, it's 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 been it's been down. But like, like, do you think like it's he took so much damage in that fight that it, it ruined his career? No, I don't think. For one, I think he's crazy enough for that not even to be a possibility. <laughs> I think we play a rough game, you know, and it's it's so unforgiving. Uh, you know, I think he won the first fight, or first round against Michael Chandler. I think he dropped him, and you know, it's just a, it's a, it's a battle of confidence, battle of believing in yourself. And there's no doubt that something like that, you know, takes that away from you, and you have to work hard to get it back. But he's a fighter through and through. You know, I got nothing but respect for him, um, and I'm, you know, just hope that all of us have people that love us enough that are that are willing to have that conversation and that that he's willing to listen or I'm willing to listen or any fighter is willing to listen when that conversation is to be had. Do you think it's he's at that point where it's time to hang it up or? I mean, we're all on a timeline, you know. There's a beginning and end, um, you know, and none of us in our mid-30s are towards the beginning. There's no doubt about it.